I'm building a one-page website in Framer for a real client project. I'm working on this project for a friend. He's actually a consultant. He's been in the merch manufacturing industry and he wants to consult with um, studios and creators to help them get their merch off the ground and sell it to the audience. So I'm gonna show you how to build this website from scratch in Framer. Now I've gone ahead and designed it in Illustrator. You can see some of the process here with my logos and the design. So here's the final design in Illustrator for now. I might change some of the aspects, but you can see here you've got the 3D character. Uh, we've got some different card elements, typography, colors, gradients, and then we've got this section here, and then uh, about section, and schedule a free order, and then a footer down the bottom here. So um, we're gonna be creating this design, and we're gonna be doing it. So first things first, I'm gonna open my asset export menu on the side here, and I'm gonna start to export some of these elements. So I've got these logos here, I've also got the 3D elements. So I'm just left clicking, holding shift in Illustrator, it's easy to like quickly copy everything, and we can go, what you want to do is you right click and you go collect for export and then we're going to select as multiple assets and it's going to put all those in. I uh, just got to fix this one here because it was grouped together. Make sure it's not grouped or also it will save the has asset all as one object. I've got this image here. I'm going to click that and then we've got, I've got an image of that 3D character. Yeah, I've got, I've got it in my folders anyway and this logo as well. So I'll just quickly rename these and then I'll jump into Framer. In Framer, I'm going to go ahead and make it longer and I'll make the desktop size we'll go 1440 typically that's what I like to work with oh like we could do 1920 doesn't really matter now what I want to do I want to export some of these colors so I'm just gonna go start ahead and building so I'm going to use my eyedropper I just quickly screenshot and drop this image of the landing page I'll get to quickly I drop the colors which makes it super easy so I've got this and then now what I'm gonna do want to work on the nav bar so I'm gonna go to insert I'll type nav and we'll do a simple um, nav bar. I'm gonna go with this one. Sweet, I'll make it a bit wider. With my mouse, you can drag that, which is super cool. And <clears throat> for this one, I'm gonna have to double click into it and go into the component. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load in um, my logo. So all those assets I just installed, I'm gonna quickly drag them in. I'll delete that frame of logo and just drag and drop that within the uh, section here within the the stack so we've got the logo there which is looking cool Go back to illustrator we've got about services and book core and i'll delete the other ones and we're going to actually style this so i'm going to have to upload some fonts first i'll just quickly change the colors i'm going to go to my assets i'm going to go to styles and i'm going to add a color style we'll call this black boom i'm going to add another one and we can just eye drop it which makes this super easy now we need to do our text styles as well so for heading one we're going to be doing this one um, so it's bing and dime display so we're going to have to upload a font so i'm going to go custom uh, upload so i'm going to upload another one now the other font we're going to be using is outfit uh, outfit is a free font you can get it on font share the other one is from brandon nickerson uh, he's a type designer and he creates lots of different fonts and gives some out for free, which is super cool. So I'll just go OTF and we'll do lights. And then we see the two fonts there. Beautiful, cool. So now we can make a style. So I'm going to go find our fonts. As you can see, you know, you can actually right click and you can click copy. And then what you can do is you can actually copy the text. So now if I shift click on the other text, right click, press paste, I can um, paste the style and it should translate over uh, let's just go back and go to copy style paste style there we go so it works when you copy the style and then paste it so it works for text as well and you can shift click to select the whole bunch of them so what i want to do now as well i just want to change the spacing of this so i'm going to add some space between you can also do space around or you can do space evenly i'm going to space between because i want this stuff on the side there i want to have to add some padding on the right side we'll go 35 so now if i go back you can see you've got our nice nav bar there it's in white though um let's go change the background i'll click the beige color so now it should be working i think i've got to go back to this color because it didn't work properly all right there we go it's actually beige now so this is looking good you can see we've got this like little stroke here as well we can double click go into here and make sure there's no uh, border on there i want to make this text a little bit bigger let's go with 20. shift click and let's go change all the sizes at one time make it 20. so for now i'll 
leave the website like that instead of having it in the middle. I'm going to go save a new style. I'm going to click on this text. Click on the text in the right sidebar in the styles there. You can add a new style. I'm going to keep it as a paragraph for now. And then I'm going to go rename this and we'll go nav text. Nav text. So now when we click on this, I can change it to see that nav text. And now we can change that, which looks really good. And I think it's got a bit of padding. There we go. Let me fix that. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the landing page. Just an image so I can have it on the side there. Now I'm going to press T for the top tool and type in some the text. Copy and paste. And if this one, I want to make a H1. So this will be the H1 and we're going to edit it. So we can change it. So for this one, we're going to go with B and Dime. We're going to make it green. We're going to center the text. I uh, we want to make sure that it's all caps as well. Change the uppercase. And then we want to change the line height. Let's make it smaller. And then we're going to scale this really big. We want to go maybe 120 or let's go 100. And we'll change this. Cool. So I'm going to click add section and the fast way to do this would just be to add a quick section and I'm going to I'm going to click just the top one. They've already created a button stack here. And now I'm just going to delete this button here. I'm going to customize the button. So I'm going to go to the right, click on styles, and we're going to add a gradient. So we'll go to the green and then click the second bar and the second node. And we can adjust this. And if we want to rotate it, just put your mouse over the ends of the node there and you can drag it like this, as you can see. Which is super cool. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust the shadows. So with the shadows, I'm going to bring the color up like this. And we want to add uh, less blur. So you can see this, we don't really want that. And the focus, we can do box or realistic. So if we do box, um, we can turn off the blur. We'll spread it and then, and then we'll plus the X and the Y. So you should get something like this. And then we can change the text to B and Dime Book Audit. Like that, super cool. Then we'll get rid of the feel of this section. And now what we want to do, we want to create this bento box. So I'll delete this and I'm going to go insert and we're going to insert uh, one of these grids here so I can drag this in. Then I'm going to adjust. So we want two columns. So on the right, you can see it's a grid. We want two columns and we just want two rows as well. We can drop the gap down, say like 30. And the content we want to... I'm going to change it to absolute and I'm just going to drop it in like this. Delete that text and then we're going to change this text using the styles to we'll go heading three. And then I can come in here and paste this. You can also extend this size. And I'll just delete these two stacks down here. And for this, we want to get rid of the image and we just want to make it a white fill so we swap the fill to white as you can see there in the styles panel and we can also round it off I'm going to select uh, the white color here and then put we want to put a stroke on it as well so you can do a border and add the green so put that from my styles but we got this and now I can select this and paste it so now we should have one stack like this as you can see so and then we have this stack here and then I can drag this out. So it's got a max width on it. I can remove that. Um, I can say 1200, get rid of this text. And then I'm going to go and get the image. So I can left click and drag and you can see how it highlights in blue. That means it's gonna go inside that stack there. And then we can just scale this up a little bit. And you can see that it's fixed. We want to turn the lock off. You can also change to absolute so I can have a custom vibe to it. And then I've also got the pattern as well. So drop the pattern into there. So now I've got the pattern behind and we've got a little character, which is cool. And we can also add a little shadow to our character, as you can see. So just to make him pop a little bit more off the background. And I think that's fine for now. Now I want to bring this button up. Now for this text, I need to change the color. So I'll use the red, red like that. And then what we want to do is we want to bring in our 3D assets. So I'll bring in the 3D images and I'm going to use the plugin tidy up. All right, cool. So we've got these images here and I'm going to drag one in here and then one in here. And we just want to make sure that those um, 3D images are on absolute so I can 
have full control and you can see that it's actually not overflowing so what we can actually do is select the stack behind it and we want to go to overflow visible so now this can thumb can sit outside the box which is what we want and I'm going to do the same to this, change the overflow to visible. Our website's starting to come together, looking really cool, cool. Just going to add a normal section with a fill. Now with the fill, we're going to go, sorry, with the gradient, we've got green to yellow. And then we want to make sure that we select this and we get rid of the overlay. We don't need the buttons, we really just want that text. So for this, you can select the big heading, but then we can also go to the color and change that color. Get this text, we'll change it to left align, and we can actually customize the style. If you turn off the, click the X on the style, and it'll get rid of the style, and so we can customize that. So I want to make it really big, and then I want to make the line bigger. So we'll go put the line maybe 0 0.8 0 .8 should work, and maybe drop the size of it further down. Now I'm going to add a stack, and for this one we want to put some other text in it. I'll copy this and I'm gonna paste it in. Obviously, it's too big. We want a body size. And then we want to make it this color. Left aligned. Cool. There we go. And then we can play around with the alignment. So in the alignment section on the side, you can change that. Change it. Overflow as well. Change the width to 0.7 FR and I'll change this stack to obsolete. And you can hold, always hold shift and click to make the sizing go faster in the size section. Cool. There we go. So we got our. There we go so far. Cool. I'm going to add a new section and I'm going to click this one here and we'll select the styles. We've got a headline three, but I'm. We'll have to go headline four, H4. We'll do red and then we're gonna fix the line spacing as you can see here. And this one we'll just keep it on the body style. Body let's go body left aligned. So we'll do this. Fix that and then we might fix this spacing there. Boom, like this. Cool. So now we've got this image here, but we just want to fill white so i've got my text here and i've got the stack i'm just going to increase the gap and what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this stack and i'm going to drag it up into the stack above it so then we've got these two columns so one you got one stack that's a two column and then you got these two content cards and i'm going to add a white background for this and I'm going to add some padding. We'll go with maybe 30 pixels. And we'll also add a radius of 25 pixels. And then what we're going to do is just duplicate this stack. Make sure it's on vertical. So I'm going to just increase the size there and decrease the gap. And I'll decrease the gap as well for this stack here. Max width will change that to 1250 in the max width section. And so we've got these cards here. So now I can duplicate this content. Just paste it like this, which is awesome. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to make sure that it stays up the top. I'm going to drag this out so that stack um, cover shows all the content there. And we just want to make sure the align is on the top. So on the right side in the layout section, click align. We also want to align the other stack as well. So we'll change distribution to start. So now we got this. Now what I'm going to do is select this box here and we're going to change it not to relative but to sticky, right? So now if I press play, when we scroll, you can see this section on the left is going to stick. I'm just going to select the stack and increase the gap like this. And then what you want to do is just grab these 3D elements here inside the boxes. And then you'll just want to shift click all of them and then you want to sh change them to absolute. So that means you can move them anywhere along that um, card. And we we'll change the card overflow to visible. Just make sure the overall stack above that is visible as well so then you can see the 3d icons so you want to have them sticking out of the box so we're breaking that grid just makes it look more playful more fun not too like stiff and rigid and then uh, i can go ahead and like change the text we can shift click as well all these and we can just add a border green border like that and then for these cards you can add an effect so with the effect what you want to do is you want to appear 
and then we want to um, slide in from the bottom um, as we go layout in view or section in view and then we can preview that As you can see, that's what it will do with that. We want to add another section, and with this section, we can just add an image on the side. We're going to get the picture of my friend Wenbo here. We're going to fit that in, and then go back to my design here, change the text, change this style to heading three, and this one will be style body, body left aligned like this. Change the auto width. So instead of going auto height, we'll go auto width here. We can get rid of these buttons. And I'm just going to bring it, the image into this stack here. And I'm just moving the, changing the stack. I want to make this vertical. Put this within a stack. And then I just want to make this a bit smaller. We'll go 300. And we're going to put the chief on top there. So we have vertical stack. So we've got two vertical stacks here. And then we got this one. I'm going to change this stack to two columns. You can see we've got the image and we've got the text. I want to increase the gap like this and increase the gap here as well and let's increase the space that's how we create that section there and then we've got the schedule of free audit so that's pretty straightforward you can see here I'm just gonna duplicate this because I built it already and what we're gonna do we're gonna insert a form form builder we're gonna drop it right here delete these buttons and we're gonna style the form and you can see here there's oh this was a calendar embed but you can see how I styled it like this. So I'll show you how to style the form like this. Now we've got a white fill. I'm going to expand the width a little bit like this. We also want to change the text. And we'll go 14 and make it black. You can go copy and you can actually go copy text and go copy style. And then we go paste style, which is super cool. And then for the placeholders, make the placeholders, you know, black and we can do a lighter gray color for the button we're going to click edit component and what i like to do is change this to our primary color like this and then the hover we can make the hover like uh red or not on the border um the fill and we can obviously make it something like this and we can change the text uh, green i'll rotate it and we'll change the text as well to outfit not light we want um we want it a bit bigger bolder but i don't think i have the bold way for that that's fine then with success i'll change the green color a bit too green but you can see and then lastly we have a footer here now for the footer what i did is on the left you can see i've got the stack so we created one stack that's vertical and then within that we created this vertical stack with the headline text and the logo at the bottom there so you can see they're all in their own stacks and then what we did we um, change the overflow on the box. So then this 3D character, we could make it overflow. So it pops out over the edge, which is cool. Uh, I made it an animation with the layer in view and sliding from the bottom. So then he pops up like that, which is really cool. So that's how I did the footer. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on making a landing page for a real client project. Obviously, it's just a quick version and you'd have to go in and make sure that it's responsive for mobile and the rest of it. But here's just a quick way to create a simple, simple website within a day. If you want to try out Framer, use my code Jeremy, you get 25% off on any site plan. So I will put a link in the description below um, or use the coupon at checkout on the website. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see another Framer tutorial, I've got a video right here that shows you all the new Framer plugins. Check it out.